Now it's somewhat daunting when you've got two Komodo dragons coming right towards you, so I'm just going to have to keep my wits about me here. Yes, I was to be alone on the beach facing off with the largest and most dangerous lizard on earth. The journey starts at the town of Labuan Bajo on the island of Flores in Indonesia. This small town is the base of operations for many tour companies that operate in the famous Komodo National Park. So I organised to head out on a dive boat that was going to a remote area of Rincha. Komodo's lesser known sister and also home to the famous dragons. Now Komodo Island is supposedly the home of the Komodo dragon but what most people don't know is that the nearby island of Rincha actually has a larger population. Now here we are, this remote beach here apparently is one of the greatest places to see Komodos on the beach itself. With the boat moored just offshore I was taken to the beach while the others went out diving. Now alone on the beach, armed only with my cameras, I had a chance to go and look for the king of all living lizards. It's somewhat daunting to know that behind any one of these bushes might be one of the few lizards that will take prey larger than themselves, and certainly the only one big enough to take a human. The beach was quiet, a little too quiet. Other than hermit crabs and beach washed plastic, not much was to be seen but at least Rincher is not an unspectacular island. In the vine forests near the beach you may see the unusual orange-footed scrub fowl, a megapode bird that builds up large hills of decaying leaves to lay their eggs in. The temperature generated by the decay keeps the eggs at just the right temperature for incubation, leaving the parents free to go about their lives. Soon enough, I found the first signs of a dragon. Now I found a dragon track. It's going along the beach here. I can tell it's a dragon track because you can actually see where the tail has been dragging. And the footprints now. You can see the claws. As the dragon has moved its feet, it kind of dragged the tips of their claws along the ground, which leaves, well, very distinctive tracks as you can see. Alright, we'll follow these and see if we can find our dragon. Although I was looking for them, it was them that found me first. Two big dragons headed right my way. They came very close, but maintained a barely safe distance, them as curious about me as I was of them. As they circled around and around, it seemed to me that they might be looking for an opportunity, a chance to attack. Certainly, they showed a level of intelligence I have never seen in a reptile before, knowing that they had the ability to close the distance in an instant if they decided to. I was in some level of danger here. I kept my eyes on the gigantic lizards as they tasted the air with their long forked tongues. Capable of preying on animals much larger than humans, their modern diet includes mammals as large as buffalo, goats and deer. A quick bite to the heel from a dragon concealed in the grass or a surprise attack on a grazing animal is all it takes. After the initial bite, the dragon only has to wait. It is said that they follow their victim until it dies in a few days from the massive infection caused by the bite as the mouth of the dragon contains a soup of deadly bacteria and possible toxins which overwhelm the immune system of a victim. 
When the prey eventually collapses, dragons in the area converge on it, reducing it to bones quickly. For an occasion like this, they have a special fold down the sides of their bodies to allow for rapid expansion from a huge meal. It has been pointed out that buffalo, goats and deer introduced species in the region. So what did the dragons eat before that? Well, we do know that they feed on their own young, but it is an unlucky youngster that crosses a path of a hungry adult as they usually live in the trees. Looking around the island, it seems that there would be all sorts of food items available to them before humans brought livestock and began to compete with the dragons. A type of now extinct pygmy elephant lived here, as did a giant stork. Also, turtles are common and come ashore to lay eggs. The adults, eggs and hatchlings would certainly have been eaten, as would fish washed ashore after a storm. The eggs of the scrub fowls would have also been easy targets. But these days, people live among the dragons in relative peace, like here in this village. When a child is scared of a monster under the house, you kind of take that seriously. <laughs>